Well, the college basketball season is off and running, and the USD women coming off a tough weekend event at the Sanford Pentagon, the Bad Boy Mowers Crossover Classic, which saw them face off with the number one team in the country in South Carolina and number 18, Gonzaga. And uh, unfortunately for Don Plitzwhite and company, a couple of, of hard-fought losses. But as we bring in the head coach of the Coyotes now, Don, uh, considering all that you've dealt with in terms of turnover on your roster, how many new kids you're working into the mix, I, I feel like there's got to be a fair amount of encouragement based on what you saw from your team over the last few days. Well, the plan for us was this summer to have eight weeks to work out together. That got cut to four weeks. And, but that happened to everybody. We had planned to go on a foreign tour so that we had extra practice time and we could see game competition against somebody else to get our new, pro, our new team ready to go. That obviously didn't happen. Then we start working out in the fall and we can't meet our surveillance testing protocols. And so now we lose three and a half weeks of working with our kids in the month of September. So that's not, that doesn't bode well for us developing a new squad. Then we start practice in October, we're back up and running. And then we have multiple kids out, isolation, quarantine. We don't have practice guys. We don't have scrimmages or exhibition games to get us ready. And then boom, <laughs> here you start. And you get to play the number one team in the country and you turn around, you play the, the 18th ranked team in the country. And I'm here to tell you, I mean, South Carolina can't go any higher than number one. They're really certainly very, very special and elite. We played them last year. They graduated two really good players, but the core of their team is back. Then we play Gonzaga, and I, I think they had an opportunity to beat South Carolina. I really believe Gonzaga is one of the top 10 teams in the country. You know, I, I really believe that we competed with them. We struggled in a lot of areas. But again, we're learning things that we just don't know until we get into games. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we look at different rotations. Di players have to play a little bit differently than they had because – we didn't have them in practices leading up to some of it. So that's a part of it, you know, but all in all, I thought our kids really, really, really competed. So incredibly proud of, of their effort, incredibly proud of, of our energy level and what we did. You know, now we have an opportunity to go back and get better. We, you want players to play on instincts and we've got players that have to think while they're playing, you know, and that's really difficult when you have to, to you can't really play well that way. We probably have three kids and our three seniors that can play basically just on instincts and the rest still have to really, really think. And that's hard to think and play. Specifically with your freshmen. Uh, I mean, you've got four really talented girls coming into your program this year. Maddie Krall started both games for you over the weekend. Uh, we saw a lot of Kyle Watson. Natalie Mazurk played a lot, especially against Gonzaga. Um, and Morgan Hansen got out there as well, the Sioux Falls product. Um, what, what can you say about how those girls responded. Now, granted, they've got a ways to go, as, you, as you've already alluded to, uh, but boy, that's, that's baptism by fire if there is ever <laughs> such a thing, right? Oh, it certainly is. I, I thought for, for four freshmen coming in and playing in their first weekend of college basketball, I, I was really proud of, of how hard they played, you know, and they played without fear, and that's really, really important. And, you know, now it's a matter of, play without fear and, and then execute and then understand, you know, and, and it's not just them. It's, it's our whole team. Even our, our veterans have to learn how to, to do more, but also make really good decisions while you're doing more. Obviously you have some talented returners to this year's team as well, but, but one I want to highlight specifically is one that, that didn't necessarily have a, a huge role previously in her career. She was a, a nice piece off the bench for you uh, throughout the first three years of her career. And I'm, I'm speaking of Liv Corn Gable, but boy, what a weekend for Liv, the senior out of Rochester, Minnesota, 16 against South Carolina, follows that up with 20 points and six assists against Gonzaga. Uh, what can you say about her and, and the level of confidence that she's suddenly showing out there on the floor for you? Well, it's really fun to see players play really, really well, but it's, it's really fun to see players who play well, who've earned the right to play well. And Liv is someone who has had her tail in the gym for years. She's been doing extra work. When, when we recruited her, she was coming back from a knee injury. So her, her freshman year, she was still doing a lot of the rehab with that. She has put in extra time to be ready so that her, her knees feel good when she practices. She continues to do that. Oh, and then she's in the gym shooting. Oh, and she's working on that pull-up game and some of those tough shots that she hit. 
Oh, and then she, because she's handling it really, really well, she can find kids on breaks and as she's penetrating. And so is it a surprise? No, but it's really fun to see when it comes together for young ladies because they put the time in. And what a great example for the rest of our, our, our young ladies on our team, on our roster. You know, you want to have the confidence to stick an open shot or make a tough play or hit a tough pull up jump shot or finish around the rim against shot blocking teams, then you got to put the time in and, and yes, we're going to work on it in practice, but is it enough time? It's not enough time. You need to do more and live is an incredible example of doing that. You've got Lipscomb coming to town on Sunday and a chance to get into the win column for the first time this year. Uh, I know the, the Bisons are not a, a familiar opponent per se, but uh, what do you know about this and what do you expect from this matchup on Sunday afternoon? You know, really focused all of our time and attention on preparing for this tournament. Now we move forward. But before, before we do that, again, our, our young ladies are in finals. And, and it's really important. Saw a few of them this morning going off to the library to take care of business academically. That's our first priority. You know, then when it comes to basketball, we focus on us for a while. We, we now have seen us against different styles of play, against high level of competition. And so we can focus on what we need to do to get better. Then as we get closer to game action, we can focus on Lipscomb. You know, despite the fact that you didn't get any wins to show for it, I think it was a great experience for you and, and, and for your program uh, to get to face that level of competition right off the start of the season. So good luck to you uh, on Saturday or Sunday, rather, as you attempt to, to get win number one, which is the first of what I'm sure are going to be many uh, for the Coyotes this season. Thank you, Jay. It'll be fun for us to actually be at home, as you mentioned. You know, when you have a, a younger group, it'd be great to play more home games. It'd be great to kind of ease into your schedule. We didn't do that. It, it was a challenge to play without fans. I thought that gave would have given us an advantage in the tournament at the Pentagon, but that didn't happen that way. But it was a very, very well-run event. It was a first-class experience for our young ladies. And it's something that it's, it's a, a memory that they're going to have, living in the bubble, the bubble life, the bubble world. And now it'll be really fun for us because we get to come home and play in front of our, our, our fans. Now it's going to be a limited group, so you got to be a season ticket holder is what I understand to get to the game. So get your season tickets and come. This group is really fun to watch. They're going to be really fun to support. Don't give up on our young ladies yet. We've got a lot of fight. We've got a lot of competitors on our crew, in our crew. And I think this crew is going to be really, really fun for our fans to watch.